Today, let's talk about something wonderful in the early church, and I would describe it as mega power and mega grace. I'm going to read to you from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 and 33, where we read this. Now, the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but that they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Back in Acts chapter 2, verses 44 and 45, we saw the sharing heart of the early church. Those verses tell us how they shared with one another and even sold their possessions to help each other. That was true of the church when they were about 3,000 in number. Now the number of Christians was much greater, and they still had that sharing heart. We read of this great generosity in these verses. Those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own. This was true of the multitude, not just a few. To say it simply, they regarded people as being more important than things. This unity was a wonderful evidence of the work of God's Spirit among them. The commentator James Montgomery Boyce made an interesting observation about this unity in the early church. It wasn't the unity of conformity, where everyone is pressured to be exactly alike. This unity was something greater than that. It was the unity of God's Spirit centered on Jesus Christ. And because of their unity, they had all things in common. They recognized God's ownership of everything. It all belonged to God and his people. Because God had touched their lives so deeply, they found it easy to share all things in common. The unity and generosity of these early Christians was wonderful to see. Everyone would love to live in a community like that, yet... Those Jesus-focused hearts also experienced something else. We read here in these verses, With great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. This great power was paradoxically both the result and at the same time the root of their unified, generous attitude. They put God first, people second, and material things a distant third. We also notice that they gave witness to the resurrection. We see the central place that the resurrection of Jesus held in the message of the first Christians. They preached a resurrected Jesus. So we read that great grace was upon them all. Grace is God's favor. Without sounding too sentimental, we can say that God's grace is his smile from heaven. It is the favor and goodness of God to his people. Even better, it wasn't just grace, it was great grace. One commentator says that this is literally mega grace. The phrase great power can be understood as mega power. And did you notice who this was for? We read that this mega grace was upon them all. Not just a few special apostles, but for them all. All. So today, radically put your focus on the resurrected Jesus. Receive the gifts of his generosity and spirit of unity. Then receive his mega power and his mega grace. It's for us all.